Tom here from Lawrence Systems. And the first question is, what's running in the background? I just know this gets asked and I think this is kind of fun. It's a tool called Hollywood that is a Linux package that makes it look like I'm doing something Hollywood, like really important and flashy screens and in depth. But it's not about that. This is about what's in my rack. Now, we've done a few rack tours in the past and I want to do an updated video on this. And this is just the hardware for how we set it up and how we cabled our main rack that runs our main workloads for my company in terms of things we don't run in the cloud because, you know, it's way better to have your cloud at home. At least that's my opinion as much as possible. But the lab video I'm working on is going to ask questions about this and I'll refer back to this video for the hardware. So there's an intertwining of both our production rack and our lab because it all starts in a production rack that feeds the lab. So I figured this video seems like it should come before the lab video. Plus the lab video is going to be a lot more technical about VLANs and how we set it up because we test a lot of equipment. We need a way to test equipment, networks, and software that we may be demoing or trialing. We build us several computers in there, several virtual machines, and how we pass them around between production and lab is kind of related to all this as well. That's why I wanted to make this video first, though, just to talk about that hardware we did because, well, that's an important question when you try to spec out what you're trying to build or assemble from the tall rack itself down to the individual components and the Ryzen systems. There's a link down below to the Ryzen systems we built for both lab and production. And there's a link down below to the 45 drive server that we use for our storage and other things you'll be seeing. I've got other videos down below linked. So I'll have all the parts as well if you just want to look at the components that we use to build this. Now, this whole adventure starts at the very back of my building. So that's where we're going to begin real quick here. We have a feed in the back. We have two cable modems, two separate ISPs. Cable modems are just reasonable for what we do. We get business class internet from two different companies. And then that feeds over to the front of the office. Now, this is all going to be split between a lot of different VLANs. And we also have a segmentation of production versus lab. And versus lab is kind of fuzzy because there is the clear cut production, which doesn't even go on the Unify network. And then there's everything else that does go on the Unify network to make things really easy to tag any port we need for any area of the office for any type of project. So let's take a look closer at the rack itself and dive into those details of how it's wired. And these are the two feeds from the two different ISPs that come in and bring us to our 8200 right here. Then from that, we have the WAN 10G that fills into the USW Pro, which is one of these aggregation switches. This has a lot of different VLANs running on it. It runs, well, a lot of the different things, including our lab and random things in the office. But then we have one more connection, which is this one right here. Now this connection is gonna go down to right here and then goes into a separate switch. Everything over here is on the Unify network and then, as I said, splits to our lab, but the Aruba switch is the more protected network and it just has a few VLANs to segment out each of these things. We have each of the green ones for the IPMI management and then these connect to a couple servers to do the communication with a couple of the production things. Now, the way that follows down into the case here and these are each one of our Ryzen servers, you see that the green is for the IPMI, this is for what we just call the other dot two network, but there's a little bit more to it than that. But to keep it simple, that's any of the production stuff. It is a physically separate network versus over here, orange is for storage and the black is part of the main network. So we can VLAN anything we want over to this. And it, like I said, between a lab and any of the other things we have running, but nothing necessarily production, maybe a few office computers on there just that different segmentation. And then we repeat that as we go down to the next server and then down to the 45 drive server. The 45 drive server is only for storage. So it doesn't really need to have any of that other network access. So it just has a connection here for storage and connection here for office. Separating the storage is nice and keeping them all this separate color, which we'll look around right here. You can see how we looped them all up. We left some service loops in there to just come around and come to the back bringing them back up through here. We're just using this to uh, feed the cables to give it a nice look. But we know all the orange are storage. Then we have these two 25 gig connections, which are back down to our Ryzen's. And then we have this and it's labeled for where it's going, front switch, back switch. And of course the green here is a 25 gig connection to our lab aggravation rack, aggregation rack 25 gig as well. Pretty straightforward setup. It's about label and simplicity so you're not spending too much time guessing it. Now there's one extra connection in here that actually goes around to this, 
which is our UNVR Pro we have on this side. The UNVR Pro, definitely really cool. Also, neat feature that you can do this and see what's uh, going on on different cameras right on the unit. Definitely really cool. Maybe I'll do an updated review of it. But the UNVR Pro is nice. It's among the things we use. We have Synology and Unified cameras. All the Unified cameras tie to this Synology camera. Uh, system is tied to, well, I should say Synology and VR and different cameras we test in the office. So we do use both systems because we do sell and support both systems. But then coming all the way down here to the front of the case, these are the two Ryzen 1, Ryzen 2, and of course our 45 drives. And with that extra slack, we're able to slide this in and out relatively easy. And it's all powered by an extreme power UPS right here. And we're sitting about half load on it. So it's not not pushing it too hard and leaving all the slack in there is what allows it. And you can see right here, because we need to roll it out for service. Nothing's in the way, slides in and out real easy without it getting caught up on anything. One thing I want to note is that Aruba switch, we are not using the instant on and I've done videos before on it, but I'm really not impressed with the instant on cloud. It's Good for basic use, but I don't find the Instant On Cloud all that great. We've actually just turned it, and this is a nice thing about the Aruba Switch is that they have local interfaces. So we turned it on just to use the local interface and not reach out. But the Unify, we self-host the controller ourselves. So all the Unify network is controlled by us. And that's uh, going to be covered more in depth, of course, in the lab video when I dive into it deeper. Now, let me know what you like, what you don't like, and of course, what you'd like to see in that lab video where I'm going to get a lot more technical on VLANs and how we set things up. I really want to help people with a roadmap and talking about like XEPNG and the software we use for our lab because I, I want to make sure it's very accessible for people to create their own, build their own you know, cloud at home. This gives you really good experience. And despite what you might have heard, not every workload is going to the cloud. There are still lots of workloads done locally. Some companies are choosing to run their own data centers and saying, well, the cloud bill came and it turns out the cloud bill um, doesn't pay off quite as much because even though compute prices are going down, uh, cloud bills keep going up. And it's has more companies thinking more consciously about do we host some of this internally? And of course, a lot of home users and people of more technical acumen, like I imagine a lot of my audience, you really like hosting things at home. And so do I. I think it really keeps us engaged with the technology and it's a lot of fun and just great learning. So leave your thoughts and comments down below. Head on my forums for a more in-depth discussion and thanks.